Uh, by the way, the uh, music that is not hymns this morning is from a CD by Liz Story, who's a wonderful pianist. Um, when we were cleaning at Al Yeoman's house, you may have heard me mention before, that we found a group of sermons he had purchased from Reverend Bruce Clear, who was the All Souls Unitarian Minister in Indianapolis, Indiana. And this is from a service that Reverend Clear gave in 2006. I still think many of his messages are resonating today. And it's called, Are All Religions Really the Same? Can people hear me okay, by the way? Okay. I begin with a question. Are human religions like a mathematical problem or formula or are human religions more like a work of art? Those are two fundamentally different ways of looking at our religions. Some approach religion as if it were a mathematical problem, but they believe there is a right answer to the question of life, and it is religion's job to reveal that answer, to provide the data and variables needed to offer a solution. Others might say that religion is more like a great work of art. Its job is not to provide the right answer, but rather, like the role of art, to interpret our experiences in such a way as to make them meaningful and helpful in living out our lives. Is religion meant to offer an answer or to offer insight and interpretation? I asked this question at the outset because I think the way that we look at the role of religion makes a difference in how we answer my sermon title question, are all religions really the same? There is a cliche that tells us the world is getting smaller, and in many ways, I suppose it is. We are rapidly learning about other cultures and other people who previously struck us as exotic and alien. For many generations, when we spoke of Asia, for example, we used the phrase, the mysterious East, and somehow the phrase made sense to us. It makes less sense as time goes on, for the mystery is lessening as we learn more and more about each other. Unitarian Universalism has tended to have a generous attitude toward other religions. It is our hope and expectation that people around the world can get along. And in that hope and expectation, we tend to think that all people have a lot in common and are more alike than different. This attitude often predisposes us toward acceptance of other religions. A few years ago, I mentioned here one of my all-time favorite stories about the popular misconceptions of religion. Since it presents such a perfect introduction to what do I just wish to address this morning, I offer it once more. When the British philosopher Bertrand Russell was arrested for draft resistance in World War I, he was taken to jail and interviewed by the jailer who was filling out a routine form about his background. One of the routine questions was, what is your religion? To which Russell replied, agnostic. The jailer didn't recognize this word and asked him to repeat it and spell it. After Russell did so, the jailer looked at the paper and said, agnostic, agnostic. That's a new one to me. You know, there are so many religions in the world, but we all worship the same God. Though I suspect we think ourselves to be somewhat less naive than Russell's jailer, nevertheless, I also suspect that most of us Unitarian Universalists share a good deal of his underlying sentiment. Maybe not we all worship the same God, but perhaps something like, hey, we are more alike than we are different. Sure, the jailer didn't know what he was saying, but his intentions were good. We see in his comment an attempt to be generously accepting of someone with a different religion, even if clumsily so. For most of us, such a gesture is worthy of approval. God knows there isn't enough religious toleration around these days. wonder what Reverend Clear would say these days. <laughs> the statement that all religions worship the same God is a somewhat sloppy expression of a deeper idea that has been attractive to many Unitarian Universalists over the years. The idea is that what separates religions from one another is pretty superficial, and that underneath these differences, at the center of each of the world's religions, we can find a universal human religious value that transcends peculiar cultural expressions. The argument goes something like this. 
If you strip away all the unnecessary historical and cultural baggage, if you look past the exterior of creeds that are really only artificial coverings of something more fundamental, and if you can get people to really listen and understand each other's central religious convictions, you will find that religions and their basic essentials are really saying the same things. It is this sentiment that was expressed through an earlier reading by, through a reading by Unitarian minister Thomas Wentworth Higgins in 1871 when he said, all religions show the same aim, the same symbols, the same forms, the same weaknesses, the same aspirations. Looking at these points of unity, we might say that there is but one religion under many forms. This view is very persuasive indeed. It would be even more persuasive if it had the added advantage of being true, however. The fact is, from my perspective, it is only partially true. The answer to the question of, are all religions really the same, is similar to the answer to many other important questions. Yes and no. Or it depends. Or in some ways they are alike and in some ways they aren't. It's a little like asking the question, are all human beings really the same? Both answers, yes and no, can be defended. Of course all human beings are the same. They share the same biology, they share the same needs, the same pleasures and pains, the same set of emotions, the same aspirations and desires. But it is also easy to argue that all human beings are not the same. We are each unique individuals with the differing sets of values and beliefs. A computer program in Indianapolis has a very different life than a rice farmer in Thailand. A Hindu ascetic who spends 10 hours a day in silent meditation is a very different person from a suburban American mom who spends much of her day transporting her kids from school to soccer or scouts. Yes and no is the only credible answer to the question, are all human beings really the same? And so it is when you ask of the world's religions. I propose to use the remainder of my time by arguing for both answers one at a time. Are all religions really the same? There are shared, common human needs that lead us down the path of religion. We want to make sense of life. We want to understand our relationship to the universe. We want to know what is right and what is wrong. All of these needs are found in all cultures and give rise to our distinctive religions. A Buddhist may seek personal fulfillment by practicing spiritual disciplines that sharpen the mind and spirit spending hours in concentrated meditation. A Hindu may seek personal fulfillment by conquering desires and emotional attachments to worldly things. A Christian, by surrendering, surrendering his or her will to the teachings of Jesus as interpreted by the church. A Jew, by carefully observing all the traditions and rituals and rules of their religious heritage. What is most significant is not the, so much the way in which they seek fulfillment, but the very task of seeking it. Are all religions really the same? Of course they are, to the extent that they address the same human yearning for meaning. Religion expresses our human passion for meaning and values. I have mentioned in the past Henry David Thoreau's famous retreat into the woods surrounding Walden Pond. No one can read his reports of that experience without observing it, that it was, for him, a deeply spiritual encounter with nature. The cycle of seasons, the bird songs, the production of food from the earth. The human encounter with nature for him, as it is for many, was an encounter with the divine. I mentioned Thoreau in particular because he also reported that he began each day reading from the Hindu text, the Bhagavad, Joe, how do I say this? Bhagavad Gita. There, thank you, Yvonne. Gita. In that ancient tradition, one also finds a religion that raises nature to something divine over us, of which we are just a part, rather than nature being something subservient to our own powers and needs. The experience of nature as an expression of the divine runs through many religious traditions, including Native American and pagan. 
This view is one of many common religion ideas cutting across many cultures. Many of the world's religions seem to share common contemplative practices. For Christians, the act of prayer or communicating with God is very important to their religion. For Buddhists, the discipline of meditation or seeking inner harmony is very important. Christian prayer and Buddhist meditation may appear to be very different forms of ritual, but both are performed for the same spiritual reason, to leave the profane world and be in touch with the sacred. One of the tasks for all religion is ethics, and given the diversity of cultures in the world, it is surprising that the ethical rules rising, arising out of religions are so similar. Each religion has its own version of the golden rule, for example, and it is impressive how similar their statements are. We are most familiar with the Christian version of the golden rule found in the Gospel of Matthew. Whatsoever you would have others do to you, do so unto them. In Buddhism, though, hurt not others in ways in which you yourself would find hurtful. Hinduism, this is the sum of the Dharma. Do not unto others which would cause you pain if done unto you. Islam, none of you truly believes until he wishes for his brother what he wishes for himself. The principle is a universal one, and similar statements can be found everywhere, from Baha'i to ancient Egyptian writings to Native American spiritual traditions. It is also found in many secular writings. Socrates put it this way, do not do to others what, which would anger you if others did to you. All the major religions of the world teach honesty, charity, and compassion. Most people in the world, when they wrestle with ethical issues, do so through the lens and perspective offered by their own religious tradition, and most religions seem to agree on their basic ethics. Okay, now it's time to switch gears, though, and answer the question from the opposite way. Well, all of them really the same? Well, of course not. The world's religions are reflections of different cultures which present different worldviews. Take, for example, the difference between Eastern and Western views of an individual. Western cultures view the individual as central, and the tradition of individualism is an integral part of our philosophies and religions. But in the East, the individual's identity is not so autonomous. It depends on culture and context for its nature. There are many implications to these different worldviews, but one of the more obvious ones concerns religious views of the afterlife. Let me offer you a choice between two scenarios. What will happen to you after you die? You have a two and only two choices here. Scenario one is that your life continues in another world beyond this one. You maintain your own identity and individuality. You have a memory and self-consciousness. Eternal life means that you continue living as the same person you were when you dwelt on earth but you were simply transformed into another environment. I don't know if you'll have a body or not, but you'll definitely have the same identity, probably the same name, and certainly the same consciousness. Scenario two is different. After death, you do not maintain your distinct identity, though your essential life force continues. Your soul becomes merged and united with the cosmos itself and is indistinguishable from other souls. There is eternal life, but not continued individually. For each person unites with the soul of the universe and contributes in that way to the ongoing rhythm of life. If the metaphor of God is used, you become united with God. If the metaphor of God is not used, you become united with the cosmic force of life, whatever that may be. Which of these two scenarios would you choose if they were your only choices? Would you like your individual identity to continue, or would you prefer to be joined and merged with the cosmic life force to contribute to the power that gives life in the first place? He says, I think I know what most of us would choose. I'm not sure what most of the people in this room would choose, what he thinks they would choose. He says, most of us who would raise in the West would make the same choice 
to cherish our individuality above almost anything else, and to continue life with that, and to continue life without continuing our distinctive identity makes very little sense to us. For, me, for most of us, he says, the first scenario is therefore the obvious choice. I'm not sure that's true in this room. <laughs> These two scenarios express some fundamental differences in values between Western civilizations and Eastern civilizations, and therefore between Western religions and Eastern religions. Western philosophies, religions, and ideologies tend to begin with the concept of the individual, and nature is understood primarily in terms of how it relates to human individuals. Eastern philosophies, religions, and ideologies tend to begin with the concept of nature and the cosmos, and human individuals are understood primarily in terms of how they fit into the broader cosmic system. Are all religions then really the same? Apparently not. Let me give another example. The Western mind assumes that it is our obligation and right to control nature. Because the Westerner begins with the individual, we can read in the book of Genesis that God gave human beings dominion over the earth. Almost no one in the West questions our right to control nature. For many in the West, our ecological consciousness is only a very recent phenomenon. For thousands of years, we gave far more thought how to conquer and control nature than we did how to respect and preserve it. To us, the measure of civilization is defined in terms of the number of cars or telephones per capita or the speed of our transportation and communication. I don't intend to be critical of the Western idea of human dominion over the earth. This notion has been tremendously beneficial to us over the centuries. I wish only to point out that it is in fact a Western worldview that we take for granted and hardly notice. The Eastern way of thinking is quite different. Most Eastern thought begins not with the individual, but rather with the universe in which, into which the individual fits. As a result, it would be scandalous to the Eastern mind to assert that human beings are granted the right of dominion over the earth, or the right to exert as much control over nature as they want. In Hinduism, when, where minor gods play a role, those gods reside in nature, and therefore nature must be approached with caution and respect. Buddhism is the most contemplative of religions, and it teaches us how to understand and accept rather than control nature. Perhaps the religion that most emphasizes the primacy of nature is Taoism, whose central teaching is living in harmony with the forces of nature. Don't interfere with nature is the constant advice of Taoism. Here's a line from the Book of Tao. Compare it with the Genesis statement about humans having dominion over the earth. The Tao says, those who would take over the earth and shape it to their will never will succeed. So are all religions really the same? Not according to these differences. And these, I suggest, are not minor differences. They go far deeper than simple observation but that we all worship the same God. Even that statement points to far deeper differences. Westerners tend to be monotheistic beginning with the ancient Jewish heresy that there is only one God. Hinduism, by contrast, while acknowledging our one primary God, also recognizes 33 million lesser gods, give or take a few hundred thousand. <laughs> Buddhism doesn't talk much about God at all, and some Buddhist sects don't have any belief about God. Western people understand God as an individual, a divine person, like a super being who thinks much like us and acts like much like us, only perfect. Western religions also believe that God intervenes in human affairs and will fix things if they go wrong. Eastern religions are less likely to see gods as personal and gods remain quite aloof from human affairs. To say we all worship the same God even overlooks the fact that worship means very many, very different things around the world. The Western practice is to gather together and worship as a group, a congregation. This is almost completely foreign to Eastern religion, in which worship is more often an activity to be practiced alone or within the family. So there you have it. The world's religions are and are not the same. I suspect that when most people ask whether all religions are the same, they are really wanting to know the answer to a different question. 
What most people want to know, it seems to me, is whether any one religion or is as good or bad as any other, or if one is superior to others. The answer to that, it seems to me, depends on which religious questions are most important to us. It is relatively easy to identify the questions that religions tend to ask. What we tend to find in studying the world's religions is that each one has a different favorite question. Some of religion's common questions are, what is the purpose of life? Why are we here? How can I cope with suffering in life? How do I find personal peace and contentment? Question of ethics, how do I know what is right and what is wrong? How do I know truth? On what can I depend? These are questions that human beings the world over ask themselves and usually turn to religion to discover answers. And the fact is that religions tend to focus their attention on one question above all others. Here are a few examples. What is the purpose of life or why are we here is a favorite question of the Hindus. And they answer that the purpose of life is to discover the hidden fact that we are Brahman, God, our destiny is gradually to uncover the God within us and thereby achieve oneness within the divine. How can I cope with suffering in life? This is the favorite question of Buddhism. The answer is that as you approach enlightenment, you realize that suffering is an illusion because you slowly discover that life itself is an illusion. How can I find personal peace and contentment? Islam has an answer to that one. The word Islam itself connotes the peace that comes when one's life is surrendered to God. How do I know what is right and what is wrong? Judaism is one of the most ethically centered religions and has given us the Ten Commandments along with many other rules of personal ethics. How do I know the truth? On what can I depend? Christianity, more than any other religion, places a high premium on correct belief. It is the only religion I know of that considers itself to be logically and rationally true in any literal sense. For most other religions, truth is a metaphor that simply helps us understand life better. Are all religions really the same? If you think religions function like a mathematical problem does, to provide the right answer to life's perplexing questions, then you will see that religions offer very different answers indeed, and that is that. They share a few, but a very few answers. But if you think religion works more like art does, that it provides insight and interpretation, not some elusive right answer, then you can affirm not only that religions provide differing interpretations, but that the difference are differences are beneficial to us, for they provide greater lessons. Religions are alike, and offering more insight into the same puzzling questions of life. The ways in which religions differ from one another can be significant. The important question, it seems to me, is how we treat those differences. There can be several approaches to take. One says there is only one right religion, and while others may be well-intentioned, they are wrong. This approach is not uncommon and it carries blinders, denying that adherents of that supposed one true religion have anything to learn from any other religion. Another approach could be a form of extreme relativism. Each religion has equal value for the context of its own culture. This approach makes no value judgment, just an observation of how the religions fit within their culture. The gods of each religion are to be honored for their respective uniqueness, and all religions are of equal value. A third approach says that no religion has the complete grasp of truth, but each one contributes a different insight into truth. We mortals can only understand eternal truths subject to our limited and fallible human capabilities. From our imperfect perspective, each religion can offer an insight from its own cultural experience, and each insight offers something of value. Huston Smith, perhaps the most respected scholar of world religions, 
uses the analogy of a stained glass window. I think Forest Church did too. Just as a stained glass window divides the shining light of the sun into different colors, so also the different religions to reflect wisdom from their own unique perspective. Each religion, like each color of a stained glass window, has something to contribute to the overall vision. Seen from that perspective, the fact that religions are so different is an asset to our understanding. This perspective acknowledges the significant differences among religions, but admires the beauty with which each contributes to a greater vision of truth. Like a stained glass window, the beauty of the whole is enhanced by the differences we see. Any thoughts? Randy, can you turn off the 